normally for this show, I would say something like lights, camera, action, but you guys can't see us, so like really that joke is kind of lost. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, regardless of that, welcome to another episode of the Channel Chasers podcast, the podcast where we do in-depth discussions on, you know, TV seasons as they drop, um, you know, after we give you guys a week to binge them all, because not everybody is a binge master like myself, or, you know, some people have to work like Brian. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's usually, that's mostly who I mean by some people, but, you know, I, we all we also consider you guys too. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, this week we are actually doing a show that we were initially going to skip, but then I was like playing around with the schedule, like just kind of looking at different options we had, and I was like, you know, this show is really good, and honestly, it's a show I needed, considering, like, the times we're in right now, so let's go ahead and talk about this one. Uh, What show are we going to be talking about this week? Well, if you can't tell from the title and or thumbnail, we are talking about the second show in the Ryan Murphy Netflix deal, Hollywood, season one. So, yeah, um, this is one that I was probably looking forward to the most. Um, I mean, Politician, I was looking forward to mostly just because of Ben Platt. But honestly, I was a little disappointed in that one. Um, it, uh, it, it, it didn't feel as Murphy as I was expecting it to be. It kind of just kind of felt like he was doing it to do it, but there was heart in it this show however had a crap ton of heart um but yeah joining him always is me the sidekick oh yeah my bad brian i i had to just jumped into the show I, 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 I botched our intro that's okay though we're doing it live people uh there there are no outtakes here uh but yeah of course brian is always here i already talked i i figured because i mentioned you like that was kind of the intro to you, but my bad. Well, it's just, you usually ask me a question, and so yeah, I had yeah, something not, yeah, prepared yeah. for that, but but anyway, here I see, doing swell. Yeah, so... Um, Cats, pajamas, and all that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is the second show in the Ryan Murphy deal, mm-hmm. um, and this is the show I was looking forward to the most, uh, Honestly, yeah. Uh, mostly because, like, I saw the I saw the cast list and I was like, "Holy shit!" Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I I said the same thing about the audition, but like, um, and Brian hadn't hasn't watched it. Um, but honestly, like I was saying before, uh, it wasn't it was it's not that it's bad. I don't want I don't want people to think that I think it's bad. It's just that it didn't have the same kind of heart that Murphy projects that I love. Yeah, I watched, like, the first episode or two. Mm-hmm. It felt like, uh, it felt like he was trying to almost create the the magic that happened with uh, Screen Queen Season 1. Do I, but, do you know, wait, do you, do you call that magic? Because I didn't I really liked like, it. it. It I wasn't, didn't like it. Well, I meant he was trying to go for, like, the similar, like, outside oh, yeah. his normal feel and it, it wasn't bad it's just yeah. it was different i i i didn't yeah, I, I didn't like i didn't hate it and like you know i i gave it a pretty positive review on my original youtube channel uh but like after like sitting on it for a while i realized that like my problem with it was that it felt like kind of overly polished and produced like, I guess is the word I want to use. Which um, is funny, though, because this is, like, overly polished because it's got the whole... Well, well yeah, it, but, but yeah, but that actually is, like, it, it works for the world, you know? Like, the politician was supposed to be a teen, like, it, like they they marketed it as, like, a, a teen yeah. show. So, like, I was kind of expecting it, like, not necessarily to have a glee. I'm not expecting every Ryan Murphy project to be a glee. Well, when you say teen show and Ryan Murphy, mm-hmm. I expect something like scaled back and like more personable. Um, and this, it felt more like a production. The politician felt more like a production. So mm-hmm. I, I like you know I was obviously still also, excited for Hollywood. Also, from what I saw, 
I know this is going to sound weird, but um, it found, it sounded like he was, it felt like he was trying too much for the message. Um, yeah, I mean, not necessarily, yeah, and, and you know, that's kind of, it's funny. And political, say, be political. It's kind, of, it's kind of funny you say that, because, I, you know, I, I, after finishing the show, I started looking up what people were saying about it, and obviously there's a lot of positive vibes about it, because it's great, but... A lot of there are a lot of people that were saying with Hollywood in particular that he was going to preachy and about a message. But I feel like with this one, this is the type of message we need right now, especially with the current state Mm -hmm. that Hollywood is in. And Mm -hmm. um, you could tell that he was actually trying to say something instead of trying to force something out. This is something that um, he actually feels. I feel like this could be like a little preachy, but with the but the fact is that um, the way that the story is set up, they can be a little bit preachy. It, mm-hmm. There's like story precedence for them because they're making a movie. They're yeah, they're making a movie with a message, and so that like obviously the message is going to be portrayed not only in the movie itself, but in the people who are passionate about making this movie with a particular message. So yeah, yeah like it's def- it's definitely got that. And it's got that like spark of Ryan Murphy magic that anyone who is a fan of his, any of his works knows, mm-hmm. right? Like uh whenever he's really into a project. And I mean, he's talked about this like ad nauseum about like, you know, you can definitely tell when he's into something and when he's not. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and- um the most infamous and like first yeah, was of, course, was of course Glee because you know the unfortunate tragedy with you know Corey and like the fact that Ryan and Corey were actually very close friends and of course you know his unfortunate suicide rest in peace um, like resulted in Murphy just not really feeling the spark with the show and so he kind and of wanting to distract it. himself with his other stuff and he yeah, openly so- admitted that he let other people take the reins. While he focused on other things, and that he show, openly admits that the show was not good, as as good, yeah, as good during that suffered, time, and the show definitely suffered for that, and honestly, never really recovered. Uh, but you know, we're not here to talk about Glee. Um, but I feel like that's the most poignant example, right? Because like you can, and you can tell from shows like Glee and like you know, Feud, Betty and Joan, uh, shit mm-hmm. like that. That like Ryan Murphy has a particular love for theatricality and presentation, mm-hmm. um, and this show definitely embodies that. And he's also a master of dialogue. You can usually tell when a Murphy project has like effort, it's like real Murphy effort in it, mm-hmm. when you listen to the people talk. Um, it, indeed. And uh, and this show definitely has that, and it also has like some of Murphy's favorite people. So, but he's not overly reliant on his usual Murphy. Players, no, because that's which... the thing. That's when he's good. That's when he's good. Is he gets people that people that he trusts and works with before. But he also gets new people that he's never worked with yeah, which, before. Which, which is what the most exciting part about this project is because, like, you because you know you know a Murphy project is going to be decent when he brings in one of his heavy hitters from his like usual cast of character actors. I mean, um, he he for this one of the key figures just recently won an award for another Ryan Murphy project. Yeah, I mean, dude, like, look. Ryan Murphy knows if he wants one of the actors that he can get the best performance out of possible is Darren fucking Cress. Yes. Um, and he got he got that with the assassination of Gianni Versace, which was absolutely phenomenal. Oh my god. Um that's that was one of the best shows I watched last year or it wasn't even last year, it was like two years ago, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um now. But like that was that was one of the best shows I had watched at, at the time. It had me like completely gripped. He was really into the character, and this, um, you know, role in particular for Darren, um, you could definitely tell that like it was not just like 
a role he was doing for as a favor for Ryan. You could tell he also believed in what Ryan was trying to say here. And yeah, you know, a lot of times, especially with the internet now, people can be like, oh, I'm tired of people just trying to, you know, say an agenda or blah, 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 blah. But here, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like he is, he's, you know, Ryan is a veteran of the industry. He, you know, knows the ins and outs. He knows the struggles. Um, and so he wants to make this message of, you know, this. we know what Hollywood is now. But let me show you what Hollywood could have been if we started just a little bit earlier. And, yeah, and definitely uh, they address something that uh, not a lot of people talk about with Darren Chris. Mm-hmm. The fact that he is the fact that he's half Asian, yeah, and and but mostly passes for white, um, and you know that's that's kind that's a thing that's a thing that like a lot of people you know struggle with. I mean, I'm you know I'm mostly Hispanic, but I look Asian, and so people often like just assume that I'm Asian and make the Asian jokes. And I'm like, actually, you should be making the Mexican jokes, but but you know that's neither here nor there so i i definitely feel you Darren Tress. like filipino genes are mad strong uh but like you know and and the thing is not only they also address the whole i don't know how much i can say as cis male but <laughs> but they address the whole fact that uh he doesn't look it oh yeah no Pat, in the show Pat, Passing has always kind of been a thing, especially within, um, like, within Hollywood, right? Like most of the mm-hmm. most of the most of the time, especially with you know, mixed heritage actors, most of the roles you can get are what you can pass off as. And I mean, look at, I mean, you know, we even have recent examples of that today of people who aren't even those races but can pass, and so they've gotten roles. Ronnie Hawk got the role of, um, you know, Olivia of On My Block could not pronounce a single word correctly, was called out, and immediately killed off. Spoilers for On My Block season. And you also get the reverse of people who look like they could pass, but aren't, and people assume, like, yeah, with... Yeah, that, that, and, you know, like, that often happens with Asian people, unfortunately. You know, they cast Japanese people for Korean roles, or they cast... Chinese people for Japanese roles or, you know, things along those lines because it's just like, oh yeah, you know, Asian is Asian. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the, the normal moviegoer who isn't of Asian descent isn't really going to notice or, you know, think of anything about it. And, you know, even to even to go to a more modern, like a more modern, even though it was like 20 years ago, there was like within the Hispanic community, there was a huge, huge like uproar and argument when the Selena movie came out. Um, and Jennifer Lopez was cast as Selena, um, Selena. Um, because Selena is Mexican. Jennifer Lopez is Puerto Rican. And, you know, notoriously, uh, those two, um, eth- those two particular ethnicities don't really fuck with each other. I don't know how I exist now, but normally they don't. Yeah, but also, and, you have, yeah, like, so, things so that, that go on, like, the... Thing. Controversy, I guess you could say controversy that she herself didn't even do anything to start, and that's like with Ariana Grande. Uh, are you ta- are you talking about like the const like the constant hate that she gets of like quote unquote trying to look black even though she's just naturally tan? I mean, besides like I mean, she obviously does like spray tan stuff sometimes, but like yeah, like th- yeah, that stuff that that kind of stuff happens all the time. Um. And it's just, it's unfortunate. And it's, it's, I'm glad that Hollywood does take the time to address some of these issues. Now, obviously, there are deeper, darker, heavier stuff that they, like, address here as well. And the 40s in particular, if you know your history of film or even television, like, uh, it's a very, like, shady, seedy time. Hell, most of Hollywood was either run, was run by the mob. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, 
shit got real, real fast. Uh, that's why there's the whole Marilyn Monroe uh, Kennedy family conspiracy because, you know, the Kennedys are, you know, had that storied history with the mob. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, happy birthday, Mr. President. Ex- exactly. So, like, you know, there's that, there's that whole thing. Um, and that element of it was, of course, brought up. Um, you know, usually stuff that, like, shows winks and nods to old Hollywood kind of like, you know, for lack of a better term, just kind of wanks old Hollywood off and shows this like pretty glitzy, like look how cool it was side to it. Like La La Land. No, no disrespect to Jamie and Chazelle because that was a great movie. Um, but like, you know, that, that kind of just, you know, wanks old Hollywood off a little bit. This, while it has a, you know, I guess some people could claim unrealistic if you didn't, you know, go into this thinking it was a what if, because I feel like you should when you first start yeah, the I, show, because... I will openly admit that it was a little bit jarring, because my uh, thought kept going that this was going to be real world, and so things were going to go in ways that they didn't, but this is an AU. This is an alternate universe. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's literally a Hollywood what if, because, like, I mean... As soon as I saw the first episode and saw how Archie was treated by people, I was like, oh, yeah, this is not, this ain't regular times. They literally, they actually gave a black person the job. (laughs) This is, yeah, no, this is definitely not regular. uh, And I mean, in the middle, you can even tell it from the trailer because in the middle of, in the middle of a studio, an older white woman openly kisses him. And also, and also, like, you know, you got Darren Cress and, um, you know, I forget the actress's name, but the one who plays Camille, like, they're in a relationship. And it's like, wait, you look white. She is clearly at least half black and looks more black than white. So how are you able to actually, like... And they do say, know, uh... Laura Harrier is her name, and uh, they do... Okay, thank you. They do, uh... They do address it. And, yeah, but, they do mention that they they can't go to some places together, yeah. but they, they deal with it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but yeah, it's some places it's, allow us. Yeah, it's it's uh, like so you could tell right off that. Um, so like the quote unquote unrealistic happy ending didn't bother me, right? Without well, uh, spoilers. we're going into spoilers. No, I'm I'm no, I'm just no, I'm not saying what I'm not saying what it was, but the unrealistic happy ending. I'm not saying what it is, but like the unrealistic happy ending didn't necessarily bother me, you know, cuz I you know, cuz by the time like I got two episodes in, I realized that this wasn't going to play out like regular Hollywood. No. So like no it wasn't. That's the mi- that's the mindset you should go into like when watching this, right? Even if it, it like you're like that wouldn't actually have happened, yeah. But this isn't actually Hollywood. Like that's what I'm trying to say without like actually telling you what happens at the end. Um, but honestly, like again, given like the state of the world we're in right now and the state that Hollywood itself is in right now, I feel like this was a show we needed. I mean, Murphy didn't plan this, right? Like, but. The timing was damn near perfect because um, I don't know about you, Brian, but I definitely needed some feel good television. Mm-hmm. Um, so like this, um, you know, even if the you can say that the ending is unrealistic and like just kind of trying to, you know, push the happily ever after message. Fuck it. I knew that. <laughs> like, let me have this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, so what were, what were some of your, what were some of your thoughts going into it and, um, like just kind of non-spoilery overall feelings, well, um, especially as a, like a Ryan Murphy fan. Um, I was afraid that maybe I wouldn't get to see this because, uh, sometimes I don't get to see shows that aren't on our show. 
Mm-hmm. And if you let, listen to our last podcast, uh, we did promise a different show for this week. Yeah, yeah, we said we were gonna do Solar Opposites, and you know, not that Solar Opposites was bad. I I do want to like clarify that, but I was like, uh, this show is very episodic, so it'd be weird to talk about because there's not really like a story to kind of structure a discussion on. So, like, I think we need something else, and so and then I started. I was watching Hollywood just in my spare time because I was like, well, I don't have shit to do. Let me go ahead and finally check this out. And I fell in love with it, and I was like, alright, Brian, we're doing this. Because originally we were going to do this last week, but then well, first of all, the pandemic happened, and that cut off a lot of TV shows, so that ended up coinciding with One Day at a Time ending. Yep. Yep, and because one day at a time had gotten saved, and you know, you know, I, 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 I had, you know, I had, you know, helped fight for it on social media. Brian had also, you know, gotten into it and you know shared the stuff on the campaign, and uh, like I, I just wanted to really show support and to show that like, uh, you know, I, I want to be thankful that this show is around and like give it all the support that it deserves, um, and you know. Uh, also, shout out to Mike Royce and uh, Gloria for uh, liking the podcast suite. I don't know if you guys listen because there aren't that many plays on this one on uh, the uh, podcast side of it. But uh, if you did, thank you so much. You guys are great. Uh, and thank you to all the ODAT fans. Because, um, like, that show was a blast uh, to talk about. But, yeah. Um, so, we were, I was like, all right, Brian. um I, I think we could do this instead because, like, again, episodic shows can be fun to talk about, but considering the format of our show, uh, it wouldn't necessarily, like, give us enough room to actually have, like, a full discussion, right? It would just more be, like, us reviewing individual episodes, and that's not, well, that's not what this show is. Uh, we, do, we have separate videos that do that. Yep. So um, we ended up like deciding on Hollywood. So Brian, um, back to back to you though. Um, what were your like initial thoughts as you were like watching the beginning of well, it? Like you know, well, going into it, um, I knew right away. Old school Hollywood, Darren Cress, Ryan Murphy. I knew I was gonna like it, and I knew. What 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 is that guy's first? Is it David Cornsweet? Like uh, the guy who plays Jack? Is it David Cornsweet? I don't remember ever remember his first name. I remember his last name because it's weird. Uh, um, but I don't remember his first name. Is it David Cornsweet? Dave. Yes, David. Okay, so it is David Cornsweet. Okay, got it. But yeah, he's great. Um, I liked him in the Politician as well. Uh, but like this one, he really shined. Yep. Um. But, so I knew I was going to like it, and, uh, I started watching it for the podcast, honestly, and I really like it, um, and I knew that there were famous people in it, and there were ones that I recognized, but then I started Googling it, because I was like, they look familiar, and found out a lot of stuff, like, uh, for those that did not recognize the name, um, Laura Harrier, who plays Camille, is also Liz Allen from Spider-Man Homecoming. Yeah, I I didn't know that one when Brian told me, and I was like, whoa, that's cool. Um, Also, anybody who's a big fan of Euphoria, uh, personally my favorite character Mm -hmm. on the show, uh, Maude Apatow, daughter of Judd Apatow and uh, Lexi from Euphoria, is actually um, Jack's wife. Yep. But this is, like, filled to the brim with people. Top, yeah, top-tier talent. Um, some some are obviously veteran actors. Some are veteran Murphy players. Some are just, you know, straight-up Broadway people that, like, you know, this is their first time doing television. So, like, yeah. wow. Yeah, uh, more specifically, uh, He's talking about Jeremy Pope, who... Yeah, the actor who plays Archie. Who, outside of this, he's done one movie in 2018, 
But other than that, uh, he's only been on Broadway, known for mostly the choir boy. Yep, uh, and he won a yep. Tony for it. And... Yeah, uh, Ain't Too Proud, another mm-hmm. lesser one. But, um... Yep. But, yeah, so... It was cool to see him, um... Of course, it me and Ryan Murphy, though, uh, Jeremy Pope is gay in real life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but looking at all the cast, and it's cool. You even have, um, well, first of all, going to talk about the, like, elephant in the room, the unexpected, uh, Jim Parsons. Yeah, wow. Dude, oh my god. Uh, that guy, he... Just he blew my mind, man. Um, because I, I know he had done serious roles in a couple movies recently, but I hadn't seen those movies, so I had never seen him in serious roles mm-hmm. before. So, so this really blew me away. I mean, this whole show itself was like an acting tour de force. Like, holy shit! Like most, if not all, of the performances, especially when they were in like movie mode. Gave me freaking chills. Yes, and it was so weird though, because Jim Parsons still like managed to like make you laugh at a couple scenes. Yeah, but it was a yeah, more and that, like dark, yeah. dark. Yeah, humor. like the whole lot Lana Lana thing. Yep, uh, and um, he, you know, um, he play he we we know that Jim Parsons can play an asshole very well. But my God, Mm -hmm. like, this just proved to me that he could have been a great Riddler. Oh, yeah, indeed. Uh, I can't wait to see what Paul Dano does with it, but. Oh, yeah, no, but I I still say he would have been great, too. But, and uh, he, there's another elephant in the room with the whole show is they bring in real people and uh, real life people. As characters, yeah, Hollywood, yeah, Hollywood actors um, uh, like R- Rock Hudson, but also uh, Jim Parsons, Henry Wilson. Yep. That was a real life yep. person. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He was a Hollywood talent agent who has been like coined and known for for helping develop the quote unquote beefcake craze of the nineteen fifties. Yep. Uh, he he he's the, he's the one that like really like he um there are a lot of like old school stories of him like you know making them do these crazy grueling workout regimens intense diets I mean you see it in the show where he like straight up like almost like like kicks a dude out of it uh, like a client out of his office because he ate a burger um like or he ate like an, a milkshake or he got a milkshake instead of getting like a salad um. Yeah, to maintain his figure and like he always had you know checkups every week for his clients, uh, muscle measurements, shit like that. Um, it was it was pretty, it was pretty intense. Um, if you ever look up any like old Hollywood stories, yeah, um, he helped booster the careers of like we were alluding to earlier, Lana Turner. Mm-hmm. Lana Turner, Rock yep. Hudson, I believe. Clark Gable for a little bit. Um, Rhonda Fleming, if you guys know of, that name. Uh, a bunch of other big ones. I'm sorry if we're just kind of babbling off like names of old actors, and you and you guys are either like too young or just aren't uh, into black and white movies. But like, let me tell you, man, this this show itself was kind of like everything mm-hmm. I wanted it to be because. I grew up, um, like, constantly having the Turner Classic Movies channel um, on because of my grandpa, um, and watching a lot of, like, old Humphrey Bogart, uh, like, detective movies. Um, the Maltese Falcon is a movie that I, I've seen, like, uh, probably, like, thanks to um, Thanks to life and my mom, uh, I know several of, like, Jimmy Stewart's old work. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
like it. So like I I was definitely on board. Oh with wow! This. Uh, so you know, uh, some of you newer people might even recognize this name because uh, he's still around and I believe he's still around and still acting. Uh, Henry Wilson helped booster the career of Robert Wagner. Yep. Um, I all I all, I also hear he didn't. Um, he didn't. Um, there there's a rumor that he actually found Brando. Um, I don't know if that was confirmed or not, but like I, I've he- I've heard I've heard like I've heard kind of like old rumblings that like he was one of the first people to discover Brando, but he didn't sign him because apparently Brando had too big of an ego for even Wilson to keep checked. Which is hilarious. Yeah, and also interesting about him is that he came up with like the stage names for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And you see that, and you see that happen with Rock, um, and you know other people. He even um, mentions uh, so Jack Costello, another actor that is um, in the show. He's not an actual person; he's more of an amalgam of different like classical mm-hmm. old houses, including actors, the aforementioned like, like, Jimmy Stewart and Brando. Yeah. And of course, the, of course, the classic James Dean. Uh, but um, the re- what I was saying is like that, uh, like you know, Brian was talking about how like um, you know Wilson came up with a lot of these stage names for uh, these actors, uh, and um, you know he was talking to Jack, and um, you know he's like Jack Costello. That's a pretty strong name, but I mean, th- I, I guess that could work. But you know, it's a good. You know, it would be a good one. Jack Cassidy. Jack Cassidy is mm-hmm. huge. Like, I was like, wait, so does that mean he's going to become Jack Cassidy? And then it's like, no, he doesn't become Jack Cassidy. Uh, but yeah, like, I thought, I thought that was yeah, pretty awesome. Yes, it was. Um, but, um, but yeah, um, back to the cast, though, one other thing that I want to point out is uh, mm-hmm. playing who you think is going to be a smaller character, but then turns out to be a pivotal character towards the end without giving too much spoilers away. Yeah, Dylan no. McDermott. Uh, Dylan McDermott, oh. yes, that is one, but Ryan Murphy, classic. But I was also going to talk about uh, Avis. Avis Amber. Oh, yeah. Played mm-hmm. by the legendary Patty Lapone. Yeah, that was. She was fucking great. Um, man, that was absolutely. She, she did a phenomenal job. Broadway um, legend. So yeah, before we go into details, we've pretty we've broken the thirty minute mark. So I feel like you know we've gone non spoiler mm-hmm. enough. Um, so now let's just talk about spoilers. Uh, go watch Hollywood if you're a fan of old school Hollywood. If you like, rah, rah, stuff. Rah. Uh, if you if you just want to see good acting, uh, like on full display. Uh, go watch Hollywood. It is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Totally worth your time. And uh, typical Ryan Murphy fashion, it's great acting, but it's great acting from, like, all walks of life. Yep. And and in typical Ryan Murphy fashion, the first season is, is always uh, pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Which I have been, uh, at least on Wikipedia as of right now, it's classified as a miniseries. Yeah, so we don't know if it's going to get us season two. I mean, it definitely feels like, you know, without spoiling it, that they closed the book on everything. Uh, but I think it could be a, I think the, I, I think it could be an anthology at each, um, you know, but, uh, but you know, we'll go into that in speculation. It, towards yeah. The end. Uh, so, so, yeah, um, spoiler time. So, yeah, uh, let's start with Avis, though. Um, I really like mm-hmm. her arc. I really like her arc because, like, you know, at first you kind of think she's going to be an antagonist because, like, she's the, the, the wife of the, like, the big studio head. And she also has, like, a, a quick affair with Jack while he's, you know, a prostitute at the gas station. Whoa. Whoa, did. If I knew this, I totally forgot this. Uh, by the way, the studio head, her husband is played mm-hmm. played by Rob Reiner another oh, yeah. sweet like classic hollywood person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but but yeah so her her arc is really interesting especially because uh 
we've said spoiler rant, 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 oh, and all that. Her entrance as a character is very unique and different. Yeah, like I said, she has an affair with Jack while Jack is a prostitute yep. at the gas station. Um, and you think that she's just kind of like she's there, um, and she might she might be actually be a little antagonistic because also she like invites Jack with her a couple more times and so sort of like, oh no, she's just gonna get in the way of his actual, you know, relationship with his wife and he might she might like, you know, like do all that. Well, also they they also then, talk no, about the whole fact of uh, when they do get serious at one point, he's like, you know, it's kind of taking me to this big place. It's kind of a big thing. It's kind of like you want to get caught. And she's like, that's kind of And that kind of threatens <laughs> his career. Some. But. Mm. Yep. But it also kind of bolsters it too. Because he gets noticed. Yep. And uh, also. Also. Her character takes a twist. When another character. Yeah. Um. So. You know, She. Uh, gets put in charge of the studio when her husband ends up having a stroke and is put into a coma. Because so, um, he you know, you actually think... put in his will that she would take over. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so at first you think, oh no, she's going to be manipulated by a bunch of these like executives or whatever. But no, she actually has a pretty a really good handle on what she wants to do. And she realizes, okay, I have an opportunity to tell a very unique story. And so when the story, you know, when Archie comes along with his movie Meg that Darren Chris's character wants to uh, direct, uh, she's like, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, And it's a big risk, but she's willing to, you know, bet it all on, you know, a message that the country needs to hear. Um, Yes. Indeed, and and there's like all these twists and turns. Her husband, like at first, is when he comes back, is very resistant to it, and um, he's like, "This isn't the movie that I would make." But I can't deny that it's a fan because he actually movie. does watch it, and, and even then, though he's a misogynist who also kn- knows about his wife cheating and is okay with it because he himself is cheating. With a girl that looks a yep. lot like his daughter. Yeah, that was weird. Um, but also, is, uh, but at least she wasn't like significantly she younger was. either. Uh, like, no, she was. She was about. She wasn't like. She wasn't um, like. Well, I mean, she wasn't. Uh, she wasn't like Claire's age. Uh, true. She was. She was. Uh, what I mean is, like, she was an adult, and not like. Uh, some young starlet that was oh yeah true uh like they had been having this affair for oh like yeah that's years. right i was mixing up two different characters but yeah also she the mistress because i was gonna say that i i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure the mistress was about the same age as yep. um as avis because like they had worked you're right i was i was wrong was my bad actress. uh she's actually played by uh Another Hollywood legend, Mira Savino, uh, who won Best yep. Supporting Actress for Woody Allen film, and like she has been in a lot of things like Mimic, a lot of eighties, nineties stuff. <laughs> although, although I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to be associated with Woody Allen right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but she's an old. She's like '80s actress, uh, really good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, so uh, he he's okay with her having an affair because he's having the affair, and uh, he seems kind of mm-hmm. not misogynistic, but just lazy. I, yeah, I would say very like lazy, ignorant, and also like afraid to yeah. take risk. He he likes mm-hmm. to play it safe, which was kind of the issue in the forties in the first place. Was that like they kept making the same movies because like 
it was mm-hmm. sold. You know, the the sandaled sword and sorcery type or you know type stuff, or like the biblical pictures, or you know, war movies or westerns. Yep. Or hardball detective stories. That's why you have so many of, of the same fucking roles. Like, even when you see Jack, like, you know, at the lot trying to get picked for casting, all the dudes are in the exact same outfit because it's the exact same mm-hmm. type of movie. Um, but he actually does take the time and uh, watches the movie and legit cries. Mm-hmm. Yep, and he admits that it's great. But when he gets into his meeting with his investors, he's like, well, um, they don't want me to do it. And I don't, mm. so I don't think I can. But then, but then his wife, mm. like, talks, and mm-hmm. talks to him about it. And he, and he's like, all right, you know what? You're right. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. And, um, you know, if you, if you are, you know, willing to give me a chance again, um, I'm I'm willing to you know give you whatever I'm you willing want. to restart um, the relationship just so that we can start and and she yeah, uh, at first is like okay, but then and she's like if I'm gonna go back to be in the kitchen and all you're gonna eat what the doctors tell you to eat and then she's like no damn it I actually like yep. having the power. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it wasn't even in like an evil way, right? She wasn't just like, I liked you know ordering people around. She was like, I liked actually having a voice, and that's kind of the message of this mm-hmm. show in general. Like, everyone deserves Indeed. a voice. Um, and like when he, when her husband realized that, he he was like, okay, I'll I'll let you you know co chair the studio with me. Unfortunately. He ends up passing. And you think, the next oh day. shit. Um, yeah, it's uh, like uh, it's just not going to go. And right. then, but and then his like very misogynistic like lawyer. Yeah, his attorney ends up like taking the film and burning it. But thankfully, um, Harry, best editor Yo. in the business, um, w- which, by the way. What he said before about like an orig- like one of the cuts that was a- about to be released in the theaters for Wizard of Oz not having Somewhere Over the Rainbow, that is a thing. Yep. Somewhere over the Somewhere Over the Rainbow was not originally supposed to be featured in the, the- original theatrical release of which, the Wizard of Oz. Which a uh, fun fact for you, you would think that uh, you would think that uh. Of course, being Ryan Murphy and all that, that of course he'd get an old school actor that everyone would know. But actually, uh, the man that he got is more like a voice actor known for anime. Uh, he really? was uh, the Suke in Ghost in the Shell. Uh, all right. Gordon Rosewater and Big O. Okay. Uh, All right. Names I'm recognizing. Kazumi in in, uh, Eureka 7. Really? Yeah. Kazumi in Eureka 7. That's crazy. So he's done work in the 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Wow. Huh. But he was but just yeah, a quick uh, side note because he doesn't really get too much of a role. That man was awesome. Mm-hmm. He was great, man. Like he once he saw that Jim Parsons was trying to fuck with uh, the movie and like you know try to cut out pivotal scenes, especially one that included you know um, the actress Anna May Wong, who is an actual mm-hmm, real actress, who also, a lot of people way. say um, was. Very mistreated by classic Hollywood. Yep, and she eventually won a uh, Best Supporting Actress, but um, many years yeah. later. Um, um, but yeah, um, so he was like, "No, I'm not cutting out the scene with Etta uh, with Etta in here. No, mm-hmm. like it's important." And I'd love it though, because um, originally he and... wants to 
because Jim Parsons is his character. Henry is all about uh, like has this secret obsession with musicals and all that, and so he's like, I want to give mm. this a big musical number at the end, yep, and kind of. Uh, he wants a big number which, in the uh, dream sequence. Which is ironic, though, because some TV shows and movies now do that. Like, I don't know if I want to say because it spoils it, but a certain show that we know and love even mentioned it earlier before. No. Oh, you talking uh, about Legacies? One of the cast members is in this show. Oh, you're talking no. about super, the Supergirl musical. I'm talking about Lexi and how that ends. And how that ends on, like, a questionable... Oh, I mean... I mean, is, is it a no, musical but number? The, that the message like a... of... Uh, it, and it was a musical yeah. number, dude. Mm-hmm. Was it? Because, like, it, I, I, I just thought it was, like, a dream sequence. Well, that that's the thing is, it questions things, which that's what he wanted. He wanted a scene that was, like, people would be like, what the fuck? And it... Yeah, 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 like, what's what is what's the fate of the character? Yeah. And, but, you know, to give him a little bit of credit, he did actually have a good idea, because one of the questions he kept having while watching is, like, well, we don't really know why she mm-hmm. killed herself. Um, or or why she wanted to kill herself. So, you know, like, people are going to wonder, like, well, why is she crying about not I, being part of this? I film? get you, but, but yeah, my... No, 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 I'm, I'm, no, I'm just kind of adding to, adding to that part, uh, is like that, like, he, he also, on top of trying to get for, go for that weird over-the-top musical number, also indirectly added something yeah good but i do like it where he like first tries to do the musical number and henry just stands up and he's like i have been in this industry for so long i've slept days he goes yeah he goes he goes i i've, I've been in the, i've been in hollywood for almost 40 years now i've you know, I he, he drops names of starlets. He goes, you know, I, I've had sex with insert name here in this very room. I've seen a lot of great movies. I've seen a lot of shitty movies. And Mr. Wilson, what you just suggested was the biggest load of shit I have ever heard. In your, my all of your career. ideas are the most craziest shit I've heard. <laughs> Yep, and then you know the last thing he has is when he you know asks the question about like why she wants to kill herself, and then the, literally the intern, the uh, like the replacement editor that was uh, that he was trying to get to cut the film, he's like, well, it's because she felt like she was a part of this, and like she put every all, all she had of herself into it. That's why she felt mm-hmm. like she, um, she needed to end it all, and he was like, well, look at you actually like putting your brain to use and then like Darren Crush was like you know actually that sounds but, like a good but idea but then the lawyer comes in and but I I love it though because when Henry does save it at first he goes off on like his tirade and he's like you know I lied to you earlier we didn't actually go all the way I mean there was kind of lingus and this 80 year old man going off about all this and then yep. And Darren Chris is like, yep. is this why you brought me aside? <laughs> and he goes, no, 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 no. But here's the thing. When I saw when I saw that little asshole trying to like cut up your fucking movie, I or I knew I had to make a copy of it. This is where he brings up the story of the Wizard of Oz. And so the movie Which by the way, that is a real safe. story. Someone did um, try. Yeah. Yep. Someone did actually jump off. Well, the also, page someone and did try to. Themselves. I believe, um, if I remember correctly, someone did try to like take out somewhere over the rainbow. I was just oh, bringing yeah, that back. I, up. I mentioned that. But, but yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, um, and you said someone actually jumped over the H. I think yeah. they've said that it is in the four digits of people who have jumped off the H. In modern time. Oh yeah, uh-huh. 
Yeah, but uh, she she's she's the most famous. She's the uh, Peg Ansel is actually the mm-hmm. reason why they have railings over the sign. Which she, that she was one of the which first. yes, that does actually make sense now, and is actually a meta line because they're like, she got on top. How did she get on top if there wasn't a railing? To the costume department and all that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, yep. Back to what you were saying. Yeah, so, like, after after that, the movie is saved, and so, um, you know, thankfully, like, Avis, she manages to, you know, you know, win the day, she gets control of the studio, she fires all the asshole lawyers, and she's like, all right, we're moving forward with this, obviously, you know, it's not all sunshines and rainbows, uh, it gets real dark, um, KKK gets mm-hmm. involved here, burning crosses, you know the deal, because you got a black writer, a black main lead, mm-hmm. a black female main lead, mind you. Um, but um, luckily, so, she's got a like, uh, really good uh, right hand man to handle this, uh, Dick. Veteran. Ca- yeah. Yep. Dick Samuels, um, who, uh, you know, is somebody who, you know, what um is gay and like you know but had to like hide he, it because of he know, never the really and he I was just he gonna say he like, never really did like the oh, whole debauchery bad. of uh like um uh, hiring prostitutes yeah like Henry and stuff he was just very much mm-hmm. in the closet yep and he felt this tremendous amount of guilt about like not fighting for people that he knew were great but were marginalized mm. because of the bullshit of the industry. Um, and so, the, which is why he fought for as hard as and he And apparently, uh, um, if we listen to what he's been saying, he's been trying to fight this whole time, but mm-hmm. the studio head has not been listening. Yeah, he couldn't, they, he couldn't, get, yeah, he through couldn't really get through to Ace. Even though Ace um, claims... I've always been on your side. I've been defending you when people have been calling you gay. Yep. Well, guess he goes, guess what? I am gay. Well, no. obviously he says the F word, no. but we're not using that. But he's, um, he says that, and he's like, if um, you don't, if you don't produce this film, at um, that point, Ace was still alive. Yep, I'm Yep, I'm just I'm gonna walk out. I'm gonna go I'm to gonna all the reporters and I'm gonna talk I'm going to be kind head off. You know I know secrets. Yep. And she goes, I'm going to be very kind to Avis and to Miss and to Miss Kincaid. They've done nothing but be nice to me. I have nothing against them. But you, Ace He's oh, like, I'm gonna come gonna in this. tomorrow with my resignation letter. In hand, in hand, and, oh my God. and you can decide either either you go with this movie and face some controversy, or you don't, and you face me, and I will end you. Yep, that was great. That was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and. Then, in the midst of all this, we get some extra bit of spiciness because, you know, Jack, who is like this, you know, really like all American, almost Steve Rogers esque character, um, except instead of wanting to be a soldier, he, he actually to be was an actor, a soldier. Um, even though he was a soldier. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you know, he it puts all his time and effort into becoming a movie star. And so he ends up kind of inadvertently neglecting his wife, but also in order to provide for his family um, and get paid because, you know, obviously he wasn't working as an actor because he wasn't getting noticed uh, for a while. He ends up working at the gas station and working as a prostitute. And of course, the, the fact that he's working, in a cro- pro- uh, working as a prostitute means that he's cheating on his wife uh, regularly. <laughs> Um, and he feels well, especially he after he finds out that it, really, his really wife seven twins. So he's like, "I got to be a family man." Yep, but the, 
Yep, and so he, so you know, he gets Archie, which helps out, and like you know, he eventually stops. Like once he gets steady work, mm-hmm. he stops. Um, you know, or working at the gas station, but then it's mm-hmm. like it takes a hard left, and then you're, and then and then you find out because like I knew something was up. I knew, I mean, I knew something was up. Uh, just because Murphy does this all the time. He leaves small clues and little blinking, you miss it moments. I knew something was up when she was just at the store and like that that one guy mm-hmm. was just looking at her. And I was but like, oh, I oh, thought oh, it was just going to be like an that. affair. I'm my eye on that. And yeah, yeah, like I thought it was going to be like an Avis deal, right? Like, yeah, you cheated. I, I know you Un- cheated, but I also cheated as a Until child. one day he, no, he notices something out, when he he's out with the boys. Before, and they get home, and she drops everything like a bomb. Yeah. So, like, th- so, like, we we find out that you know, because at, at first I was like, okay, she probably was cheating on him in retaliation or whatever, um, which you know is still wrong, but I get it. But it turns out she was actually cheating on him even before then. And that the babies. No, it's like she goes on like a. Like, like I said, it's a bomb because it's like a. Yeah, because she she goes she goes on a she goes she has a whole like sad monologue about how like you know, um, you know Jack you know, was all about his dream and she wanted to support him and he was always this great guy. He was so nice. So it, it didn't feel right to leave him. And she, you know, cheated on him on purpose and made it obvious so that he could see, but he was so absorbed into his dream and getting what he wanted that he didn't even realize. And also they this poor, this poor frame. dude, he, um, she, she just kept hitting him because A, I'm cheating on you. B, Babies aren't yours. B, the babies aren't yours. C, I'm now leaving to move back. No, to, move. Uh, move my, I'm, you know, he's moving what, back what home. The male equivalent of he's m- moving back the home male equivalent of a to run his family yeah. business, and I'm joining and him, I'm going with him with our family. And I'm going with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like. Again, not to not to not, not to get super personal. I, I haven't been through this exact situation because it wasn't twins. But I oh I, yeah, that's I, right. I've been here. I've been here. No, like that. Like Brian, I don't think you realize that, Brian. But when that hit me, when that hit, me, I was like, yo, I, I I had a PTSD flashback. I can only imagine. Like it wasn't twins. It wasn't twins, but like, oh my god, I had a PTSD flashback, and I was like, oh, Jack, I know, I know how you feel, buddy. It is, and she lot. does this. Um, she does this after he gets his dream and is starting to like. Yeah, yeah, and he's and he's he's, trying, he's starting to come back. He goes, you know, we'll, we'll get to go to the premiere. You know, I'll get to sh- I'll get to show our kids the movie. And and then like to just pour salt into the wound that is in my heart right now. Um, his wife is like, you know, I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I did this, but I'm gonna see every one of your movies, and I'm gonna make sure I go on the premiere. And every time I see you on screen, I'm going to smile and think that you know maybe somewhere deep down I had a part in that. And and he's and he responds. Maturely, not like I did. <laughs> he responds maturely. Well, also like, from what I know, you always will. You'll from always what I know, because you haven't even told me the full story. But from what I know, she handled it a lot maturely mm-hmm. too. Well, yeah, I mean, but also they were adults. But anyway, uh, moving away from real life, yes, uh, um, he was very mature about it, and he was like, "Yes, of course, you definitely had a role in this." And I hope that when you go home and you have your family and all that, you think that uh, part of that. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, and you also know you've always inspired another me. thing to go to show um, you like, like how good of a character that that Jack is. He was he was sad, but not but only like, that. But like, as long as you're happy, he legit fine, after his okay. wife told him that not only did she have an affair, but the babies that she had are not his. He still went to the nursery when she had the babies to make sure that everyone yeah, was and okay. Saw that, yeah, and, and so and so, and he saw and he saw the kid and he saw the dude. The dude was there, and he goes, "Go ahead." I've been man, expecting this. Me. I deserve it. It's fine. Go ahead, do it. He goes, "No, no, no," and he goes, "No, no, 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 no. I'm not going to hit you, but, but if you guys ever need anything, any money you need." Uh, just to take care of you guys or anything, just to get you on your feet, because I know you guys are, you know, you're going to be running a, a small business. If you need anything from me, anything and he's at all. Like, the, the, just the main reason why I came here you. was just to make sure that everybody was okay. That kind of hit me hard. Yeah, seriously. It just shows how good Jack is. That's why I compared him to Steve Rogers. Yeah, yes, it Steve is. Steve Rogers ass moves. Yes. It definitely is, but um, oh, man. but yeah. So it was, yeah. But and and, and also just an, another thing that like shows that how good of a person Jack is. You know, like after that happened, um, you know, Claire, the daughter of Mavis, and, uh, I said Mavis, Avis, and Ace, um, like is you know not necessarily putting the moves on them, but she's like you know being flirtatious and like. You know, trying to make advances, but he's just like, no, 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 no. Like, you've been a good friend to me. I'm not going to take advantage of that because I'm a, I'm a little emotionally vulnerable. Like, I'm not going to but, just do it to just to distract myself. If I, if I'm going to move forward, it's going to be. Because I also like the I way that they to. like evolved her character uh, and all that because initially you think that she's going to be like, yeah, because. The yeah, the bitchy antagonist for uh, Camille because she's the, like the white girl starlet versus. But the, um, uh, black and she girl is also starlet. the media um, moguls, the studio head's daughter. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but you find out that she she uh, changed her name so that she wouldn't be associated and, with them. And also, to make one other thing that I think is I really, really cool. Appreciate. And definitely, we're getting into spoilers, so yeah, we've already gotten like half an hour into spoilers, so uh, I think it's really cool that uh, she initially, in the beginning of the show, hits on Jack because she thinks that he's going to get the role and that he could help her get the role, and so she's just hitting on him for self-gain, but then, as it goes on, she realizes how much of a good... She, yeah, she see, Yeah, she sees how... Yeah, how genuinely good he is. And she's just and, like, no, I actually... And they actually like do him. end up getting together. And I think parts of Jack's goodness rub off on her because, you know, at first she's a little catty towards Claire, but um, towards uh, Camille. Uh, but and, and it's not even a race thing. Mm-hmm. She's catty because she is competitive for the role. But then when she realizes how good Camille is and, and how... And how, good, like, and nervous and... Uh, hers, she uh, she adds, ex- how like nervous and scared Camille is. Camille, she acts. She purposefully yep. botches her. Like she's screen starting it, and she's um, really good. So that like they don't. But bother then her. she's great. And then like then she looks and she sees Camille over there just shaking and like there's no way. And I'm she even has she's like the she's she told her like a Hollywood so trick she, to make you cry. Yep, which, you know, is a thing. Which, fun fact, I can actually make myself cry on command. Yeah, cry, I, I cry, can't, cry but, but trust me, I can turn on the sad puppy look. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it, it, it's definitely something hard uh, to do. And, like, you know, she she's doing this great, great screen test, but then she sees Camille and just how dejected she looks. And so she, like, completely just goes monotone for the most important final lines and she goes yep and just walks off thank you for your time 
Yep. And yeah, so uh, like her, the evolution for her character was really great. Um, I loved the dynamic between uh, Camille and Darren Craig. Mm-hmm. Um, they get into that really important conversation about like, you know, Darren understanding what it's like for Camille to have to, you know, be judged by the industry, but also not completely understanding mm-hmm. because he looks more white. So like, and also he has, and also his journey of like the fact that he wanted to do his passion project, but realizing that he had to do this film first, mm-hmm. and all of that, and uh, then realizing mm-hmm. that this film that he chose is actually gonna like say a message too. Yeah, yeah, yeah but also, and also, I just like love how uh, they have um, that race relationship, but then there's like never. I mean that race. Uh, conversation. But there's like no help. There's yep. no like uh, like oh they're gonna break up. Yeah. And no, they're, they're like, a very they, they they're honestly a very up, cute and, couple. And 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 a very re- and a very realistic one too because they, they fight yeah, but that and doesn't mean just, automatic it's a small thing. But I love the moment where um, he tells her that she got the role. Full on suit. Yeah, we're full getting on the tub suit. With his clothes on. Yeah, he gets into the tub with her yep. to tell her. Yep. Uh, yeah, take uh, take that, Henry Cavill. <laughs> There's no Adam. like slow, sexy thing of him taking off his better clothes. bathtub scene. No, it's just really funny, and it's just a, mm-hmm. a nice, like, you know, moment of levity. And Ryan Murphy is like one of the best in the business at balancing serious. Oh moments yeah, that moments of levity. That's definitely um, this show. And this show, this, sh- yeah, that that's exactly that's what this show really embodies. And uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's one of his and, best. Uh, we talk about um, um, we talk about like uh, character growth and all that. We we do have to mention the whole thing of Henry. Yeah, um, Henry. Now, I'm glad he doesn't get a redemption arc, per se. But, um, like, he realizes... Well, he is a semi-redemption. ...actions and... Well, kind of, but it's not really... It's not a full redemption arc. Uh, but he... Like kind of, it's more of like a. Well, they also do the, the one-year time wins. jump where like, he's more. But I, yeah, I, you know, mm, he's if better. I'm being honest with you, the dude who played Rock Hudson, I really didn't like see too much of the character. I mean, I know Rock Hudson, and I know he's a legend, and I also know that the guy looks like him. But uh, the act, it, there was not too much to the character of Rock. Of uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if anything, he was more of a he was more of someone to bounce but, off of for but, both, not just Henry. I will give but him for this, Archie as well. Two moments, I was like, "Bravo, dude!" Oh, his yeah, his you know his monologue to well, Henry also before that jump, when he tells the Henry time off, jump at the end, and he's like. I don't want to be like yeah, that, you. That also. You are an awful person, and everybody yep. knows it. Also, I love the genuine yeah. friendship between Rock and Jack. Like he's like, because it's like, because you know, usually you see like behind the scenes in Hollywood, it's like you know they pretend to be friends, but really they hate each other. He's like, no, nah, honestly, man, like, like Which I hope that you, sometimes I, you know, I hope you do like, well. Um, this is going to be weird to say, but hopefully it goes in. Um, Hollywood's portrayal of Hollywood always has them at their throats. But if you see sometimes with movies and TV shows, the actors get along like a family sometimes. And it's less mm-hmm. marketable to do it that way, but it's more realistic that way. And, and yeah, Jack is a very... like. Yeah, because um, he Steve Rogers. <laughs> when it does go to the whole Oscars, 
he loses the Oscar, but he mm-hmm. loses to a dude who played Santa. And he... um, which which fun fact, Miracle on Forty Third Street did win cool. the Oscar that year. But um, but yeah, uh, and he's like, I lost to Santa. How? How could I be mad? Yeah, I lost to Santa Claus. And it's just like, if, if I didn't, if I had but won, just, I might have stopped believing in him. Goes to show you what kind of character Jack is. Again, Steve. That's, Steve why, that's why I also say Jimmy Stewart, because Jimmy Stewart was um, kind of like that. But, uh, the mm-hmm. all shucks, Mary. Um, and then, like, oh, man. Uh, like, the part where he reads mm-hmm. his Oscar speech to the crew and then he proposes and I, to And Claire. I love it though because right before he does oh my God. he's like, I swear I would have done this if I had won on stage. And he's like, yeah, I would I would, I would, have done this in front of everybody. Um, I love that. Um, the Oscars was so well done. Um, like, like I said, um, er, like I alluded to earlier, it's no. not necessarily realistic. This probably, this would, this definitely wouldn't have happened. But this show is all about what would happen if Hollywood actually. Which, gave uh, by a the way, uh, we can't talk about it too much because we're running short on time. But we do have to at least give a nod mm-hmm. to Queen Latifah. Yeah, as Heidi McDaniel. Oh my God! Another legendary yes. actress. Yes. Um, but, like, wow, that was great. Um, yeah, and uh, we, you know, we only talked about him in passing, but Archie mm-hmm. was absolutely phenomenal. Um, talk about a bre- talk about a breakout star. Like we said, he was only he's only been in one movie, and uh, other than that, he's only been on Broadway, which you know, not many stage actors can do as seamless of a. Indeed, like he did, was amazing uh, in this show. Like, um, he was good at doing serious, but also comedy. What? So, like, um, Marvel? Yeah. Maybe like... pay attention. And, man, when he when he gave that speech to Avis about, like, what he was going to do um, at the Oscars with Rock, you know, so that she wouldn't be blindsided, the fact that he had that much respect for her because of that the fact that she believed in him and all that, loved all that. I love that Avis, you know, and, kept him on. And also, uh, on, um, quick note. Because we've mentioned him briefly earlier, Ernie. Yeah, Ernie. Yeah, Dylan McDermott, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, like he, um, it, it's another um, another message of this show is it's never too late to follow your dreams, you know. Um, and you know, a, as someone who has discovered what he wants to do with his life later in life, uh, I, I definitely mm-hmm. appreciate this message. Um, especially when like you know, it's all. It, this type of thing is always an uphill climb, whether you're doing something as small, uh, as big as trying to become a movie star or something as small as, you know, making yeah. a living as And also uh, just, uh, um, like, the way that they evolved his character, like, you thought he was just a pimp, a pimp sleazeball, a but sleazeball. then yeah. mm-hmm. you see, like, once the guys actually, like, start paying him back and he realizes that it's not too late... And uh, he even gets with, uh... yeah, Miss Kincaid. Yeah, that was that was pretty sweet. Um, so yeah, um, last bit I want to do before we run out of time uh, is kind of just talk about what I think. If because uh, this, you know, easily could just be a one and done. It definitely feels like the story is mm-hmm. over, at least with with this crew. But I would I would love to see this be explored as an anthology where they do different decades mm-hmm. focusing on different genres, different types of movie stars, because the movie star has evolved, like, um, you know, over time. And I, I would like to, to see how this alternate Hollywood takes that. Like the, the movie like star the whole, like a uh, classic core movie era might be cool to see. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like the sixties, the seventies, uh, like the eighties was the real rise of the teen star. Um, you know, like, you know, mm-hmm. your, your Molly Ringwalds, your Elizabeth Shue. Mm-hmm. Indeed. But, you know, that type of thing. So that would it, be very It would. Uh, um, and just to see, like, the different eras and, like, see actors that we know, especially Ryan Murphy actors, 
like maybe even some that he doesn't even work with that much anymore, mm-hmm. like Ariana. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be great. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, quickly go into plugs. We have approximately well, six sixteen, left, right? Ryan. Um, but anyway, oh, yeah, still plugs yeah, for me yeah. is not yeah, much. Yeah, it's, um, not, it's ninety minutes. I was not having a great day on Monday, so. I didn't film Legends, and I really don't think I did anything this week for YouTube or Vlair. I'm sorry, uh, but hopefully uh, tomorrow, as of recording this, I can cover at least the Supergirl uh, finale. Oh yeah, I do the Supergirl finale and. Uh, Pick up Legends again. Maybe do a couple other things. I'm even thinking of ideas for Lair. And uh, if I catch up with Katie, maybe do that. Uh, but uh, if I catch up with any other shows, I might pick them up back up. But yeah, this this whole pandemic time has been kind of a little rough on me. And this last week particularly was not a great week for me. Uh, mentally, physically, won't go into it here, but... I'm better now, and uh, hopefully future's brighter for what's to come. Uh, now off to Jay. Yeah, so honestly, there isn't anything for me, like literally, because Valer has been under maintenance and been buggy, so I literally haven't been able to upload. I have a bunch of stuff in the can, but I haven't been able to physically upload oh. because the site's been glitchy. Um, uh, but luckily they're under maintenance right now and um, hopefully by Sunday uh, uh, they, they've estimated that they, they can get the kinks Knock fixed. on wood. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Hopefully so. If we are back by Sunday, I'm, I'm going to hope I'm going to put out uh, the latest freaking Morty episode, uh, the DuckTales episode I have in the can um, already recorded. Um I have a bunch of stuff already recorded, but I don't know if it's too late to put them up because they're like a week old now, um, but we'll see. I also have plans for an upcoming new series uh, that I'm going to be doing on Vlair uh, because HBO Max is dropping in a couple weeks and I'm going to be revisiting one of my favorite shows because there's barely any TV on right now. So I'm going to take a trip uh, down in Nostalgia Lane for one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, and it's gonna be fun like doing a review series in like a total retrospective now that you know how everything ends thank you for the big hint there brian yeah uh that that, you know if you were paying attention to the background that's exactly the show that i'm doing uh it's gonna be a lot of fun um i promise i came up with this before the idea of a certain other show that's gonna be happening out in the internet land um but it just happened to coincide with uh, what these other much more famous people are doing. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully that'll be fun. Um, I, I know I'm going to have a blast. I've made a bunch of nice. intros already that are pretty fun. I've got title cards and everything. Uh, I've put a lot of effort into the prep for and this. And I think the so, fandom uh, is still big enough for Brian, people to... Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Brian, I definitely want you to watch along too, or at least like comment on the particular episode does that cover oh nice i'm telling you this will be a fun one um but yeah there's yeah so i'm planning to do that for blair um hbo max is going to be dropping in a couple weeks so i'll definitely be doing the adventure time specials when they come out uh stuff like that um i promise i haven't gotten lazy you guys it's just the site has been super glitchy and i haven't been able to physically upload and there's nothing i can do about that (laughs) Um, i haven't gotten lazy i swear um but yeah, um, next week we will be doing a double whammy. Um, we'll be doing two finales in one. Um, it's a kind of a world's finest special where we will be talking about both the Supergirl finale and the Batwoman finale. Um, and so uh, that'll be a blast. Uh, both shows have been solid. Uh, you know, one started off extremely rough and dramatically improved in the end um the other just kind of remained consistently solid uh no big improvements no big uh, what are you talking about <laughs> um oh 
Um, Supergirl, have you that... seen the latest Supergirl, though? Uh, the I'm latest like, yeah, one seen the latest is on another one. level and has me really excited for the finale. Interesting, interesting. Uh, but yeah, um, if you guys are wondering if we're doing Flash, we're probably not doing Flash, unfortunately. That's just uh, also a um, schedule. The... Uh, not the Flash was bad. Yeah, it's it, it, the season itself isn't entirely over because they're doing a three-act structure. So we're just going to wait for the full season to finish and then cover it. Um, also, just for a little teaser... Um, after we do the Flash, or not the Flash, after we do the Supergirl, that one episode next week, we will be doing uh, an episode on she and the Princesses of Power's final season, uh, which I think, Brian, you have to watch the well, season beforehand uh, also. Um, um, but that'll be fun, because like, I don't want she to turn into our Voltron, and we end up completely skipping it, because we actually covered mm-hmm. the first couple seasons of she so like, I, I want to finish it out. Um, so look forward to that. And uh, in case you guys didn't know, a uh, little and behind the scenes, real quick, uh, Voltron. We kept saying that we were going to mm-hmm. cover it with a new season, and um, on YouTube, we'd get comments about people asking us if we were going to comment it, but then other stuff kept getting in the way. Yep, I ended up fin- I ended up watching Voltron and not liking it, so obviously we kind of dodged the bullet. Um. Um. But anyway, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed our discussion on Hollywood, and we hope that you will come back for our Supergirl Batwoman discussion and our future episodes of Channel Chasers. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, We appreciate you. Links to my Blair are in the description, as well as Brian's YouTube channel and his Blair as well. So uh, check those out. But until next time, we'll catch you later, kids. Don't let your dreams just be dreams.